Oh, hello, welcome back to Plumbing College. Today we are going to look at low carbon steel pipe threading, cutting and joining. On site, for this task, you would probably use power tools. In college, you will use hand tools. Tools and materials required to undertake this task. A heavy duty pipe vise, a bucket to catch the swarfs, a hacksaw with a blade of 24 teeth per inch, a heavy duty adjustable steel pipe cutter, Stilson wrench, a stock, dies with three quarter and half inch teeth, a pen, a selection of files, in this case a half round file, a round file and a flat file, a tape measure, PTFE tape, malleable iron fittings, three quarter pipe, half inch pipe and cutting oil. Be mindful when using low carbon steel, it's measured in imperial. So in this case, I have got some three quarter inch low carbon steel and it's measured from the internal bore. Right, let's cut the pipe. Remember to use the whole length of the hacksaw and also let the saw do the work, i.e. don't push hard on the blade when sawing. Use two hands. When you get to near the end of the cut, do not be tempted to snap the pipe off. This will cause you more filing afterwards. Phew, right. We now need to remove the burrs from the outside and the inside of the pipe. If your college has an adjustable heavy duty pipe cutter, you're probably better off using this because you will get a more accurate cut. Make sure the cutter is installed correctly on the pipe, i.e. two rollers and a cutting wheel touching the pipe. When using this tool, don't be tempted to over tighten when cutting, otherwise you will damage the cutting wheel. A short while later. Yay. Whew. Right, so now make sure you remove the internal burr using the round file. We now set up the stock and die. Because this is half inch pipe, we use the half inch die. And we place it into the stock to which it clicks. Right, let's place the stock and die onto the pipe. Make sure that arrow is facing clockwise 
not facing anti-clockwise. Right, to get the cut started, we need to apply some pressure onto the die and we rotate. After a couple of turns, you'll feel it start to pull and cut. That's it. I mean, I should say. We now spray some cutting oil onto the pipe. Right, using two hands now, let's start cutting the thread into the pipe. After a while, it may become hard to turn. This is because the die is blocked up with swath. So what we do is we turn the mechanism to the left, give it a few turns to release the swath, and we then continue. The required depth is so the pipe touches the end of the dies. Right, let's remove the stock and die from the pipe. So we need to turn the mechanism to face anti-clockwise. We will give it a few turns. And after a while, we can then use our hands to the knees. Right, let's remove the cutting oil from the pipe. Let's put PTFE tape around the pipe. This will cause a seal between the pipe and the fitting. Always start from the back and go clockwise, like this. Be aware, if you put the PTFE tape on the wrong way, like anti-clockwise, what can happen is when you screw the fitting up, the tape will also come off and not form a seal. Yep. It is bad practice to use grips on fittings. Right. Let's put an elbow onto the pipe. Right. We are going to use a threaded piece of pipe as a lever. Right, let's remove the surplus PTFE from the fitting. The purpose of using Stilson's is they are designed to be gripped on to the pipe. So when we do up fittings away from the bias, we can Do the Stilsons like this. Be mindful, they only work one way. So they so to do it up to undo and then just one more thing. Right. 
So, a union. It is good practice when you remove the pipe from the bias. To remove any marks, sharp marks, by filing. If they are left behind, and this pipe is installed, somebody could grab the pipe and cut their hands. That is how you cut and thread low carbon steel pipe. Now you have a go.